discussion as to where is the threshold between digital and offset is something which has been uh, going back and forth for the last uh, four or five years. And uh, some years it's uh, 200, next year it's 1,000, then it goes back to 50 maybe. One of the things which I would like to highlight here, which is potentially a good idea for the commercial printers in this room, is uh, web to print. We have a number of uh, customers in Germany who is today getting all their jobs via web front end, where they're basically getting jobs in from their uh, print buyers via PDFs, and then they have automated uh, positions programs, and then they gang up the uh, jobs on the plates and they print it on very large format presses. And we have one particular customer in Germany who within a span of five years has gone from having one very large format press to having 10 presses today. He is today printing 8,000 jobs a day and he is extremely successful. And I did a calculation because I know his turnover and I would say that if we had maybe approximately 100 of these print shops in India, they could take care of the entire print production volume in India. So this is something which is happening. And if you do, for instance, ganging up uh, visiting cards on a very large format, so you can have 156 subs, that basically means that the uh, make ready times, uh, no, the make ready cost becomes almost immaterial. And then I would challenge and say that then we are back to saying that 10 visiting cards is cheaper to manufacture on offset than it is on digital. But we will see what technologies comes up at Drupal, whether this will change. That's a very interesting point because, you know, we talked yesterday about web portal technology, which he's referring to as web to print. It's crucial. It is something that's very, very important to the future of the industry. And uh, uh, Klaus's comments should be noted and you should look at the different software people that will be at Drupal in that area. Uh, Charlie, it looked like you were ready to say something about some other technologies. I'm not leaving this one alone, guys. You've got to come up with a couple other technologies that you feel are significant. As Stephen already mentioned earlier, about a lot of new things to look out for at uh, Drupal, and web to print is certainly one of those. Uh, Drupal, we're going to be launching a new suite of software, which is effectively a production software that enables you to communicate more directly with your customers. It's based on a 3D technology, uh, and working in conjunction with programs like Adobe Illustrator or whatever you use to, um, such as Barco's die cutting software, it will interpret the information from those and give you a 3D image which is exportable onto your screen, onto your iPad, onto your iPhone or your clients' iPads or iPhones. And that's going to be available at Drupal. And that's available for, obviously, any kind of box, point of sale material, even cardboard engineering projects. But it's also available for magazines, magazines with cutouts, facing pages, spreads, but everything's going to be available in 3D. And so we're going to be showing that at Drupal for the first time. Uh, I've got something for Hitachi. Hitachi. You're the supplier. You have 4,500 <coughs> customers are out there who are buying plates and chemicals and things like that from you. Let's get down to the simple little things. Just about everyone in this audience is probably buying supplies, consumables of some sort. Do you see anything potentially at Drupa in consumables that's going to be earth-shaking, that's going to change the landscape at all, that these people should be aware of? Recently, HP has come out with a new latex machine. So people are waiting for that machine. Uh, what will be the performance for it? So uh, I'm also looking out for good media for the latex machine, HP latex. Then for the UV printing, a lot of machines have now come into India and uh, people are looking for the good medias to be printed on UV m machines. So I feel that uh, all that medias has to be looked by us to get into India and even the, the next year, the Xerox machine which is there will require the coated paper to be also introduced in India because there is a lot of scarcity of the coated paper in India. So I'll be looking into all that segments where our customers will be very happy with the media will be available in India. 
Okay, this is a question that is maybe geared to uh, Pradeep. Deep, excuse me. Pradeep. Pradeep. I get it right eventually. You know, it's the us Americans who can't speak any other language. Uh, and I brought this because there was someone who uh, cornered me uh, after I presented and was talking about package inserts. And you were talking about package inserts yourself. And in the U.S., Something is changing in the marketplace, and I wanted everyone to be aware of it. There used to be package inserts in just about every prescription you purchased. Now, at the pharmacy, you are getting a sheet that the pharmacy is printing out on his local printer that has all the information about that particular drug that you've gotten, which is no longer being a package insert. These are two drugs that I brought from the U.S., and this is the information that used to be on a package insert. It's got my name on it. Tells you what the, all of the limitations according to the FDA rules and regulations are. Do you think this is gonna change the marketplace for this type of insert packaging? It's only going to increase because at the end of the day, you do need information. So, and especially with medicinal, uh, buying that is increasing substantially. I'm sure some of my friends out here are using and seeing the growth in packaging coming out of such applications. So it's going to come. It has to come. Is it going to be on web or flexo or is it going to go to digital? Because in the US, and I can only speak here, and I'm sure there's something similar to this, and I wish your cousin was still here who could talk about the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, the rules and regulations about drugs, prescription drugs, are changing so rapidly that are we looking at digital technology to replace the offset long runs in this area because the, shall we say, whatever the, you know, there's a whole list of things that's so small print I can't even read it. Uh, you know, I'm an old man, so I can't even read this Yes, stuff. you're not supposed to read it. I know you're not supposed to read it, but God. Even all formal are not supposed to be read. Oh! <laughs> You're not supposed to read it, right? You're not supposed to read formal leaflets. It's only for... Uh, Statutory. Ma that, uh, we, that mandatory, legal. Oh. <laughs> Just for information, huh? <laughs> for information if you don't need it. So what? what You're taking the drug? Why are you taking the drug? <laughs> don't you need it for the drug? If you read it and if you read the side effects, you'll never take that drug. You're right. You're right. The side effects are overwhelming. But what is changing? Is this a change? Is this something that's going to impact, you know, these short-run web presses, the narrow web presses, uh, you know, the non-heat set presses? I think the key question that needs to be addressed is depending on the volume that you need to print depending on the end user, their customers, how much quantity will determine the process of printing or the process of handling. And that is the critical area that needs to be addressed because the cost per copy or the cost per thousand sheets, etc., that will determine the process. Okay. All right. We have... Oh. Uh. No. That, that's... Right. This is, anyone who wants to see it afterwards, I'm happy to share it with you because this is what's happening in the U.S. Okay, so it, excuse me? It's a personalized version? It has to be digital. Yeah, the color is, yeah, there's no question that the color is printed in offset. Okay? But everything else, the black and white is. All right, what I'd like to do is we have roughly. 11 minutes, thank you. I can't get bigger than that, right? Stephen, what? Yes. I don't know in, the, in yesterday or if you've covered this company that's gonna to come to Drupa, Highcom. No, we didn't cover it, but. I think that's something that should be looked at. The yeah, technology yeah. part. Right, and, and that's gonna be there. They're gonna be there with a whole new introduction of some very interesting it's also, packaging equipment. It's also Mr. Benny Landa who's behind it. Yes. 
So, we got 10 minutes left. I have a question for the panel. Jeez, I can't even get a word in edgewise here. Drupa is only a few months away, but manufacturers take a long time before they think about a machine. They plan it, and by the time it comes out in the market, it's looking a little bit ahead. What do you see the trends in the near future? What, what are the equipments that you expect to come out post Drupa, let's say by IPEX time? Do you see any technology changes? Or are you getting ready for the next big leap? As far as newspaper printing presses are concerned, I think not. Um, Drupa itself is pretty big. I know companies, most of us know, spend an enormous amount of money in this short span of two weeks. And uh, trade shows, as everyone knows, are getting extremely expensive for manufacturers to go to, to show products, etc. So I don't think you will see that much of technology upgrading every big show like Drupa, IPEX, what it used to be in the past. But definitely, there will be upgrades done and launches done and introduction to the consumers and market, but may not necessarily be through the route of the multiple Drupa events or Publish Asia events or any kind of events that we have. I also think that most companies, they, they try via the R&D effort to present as many new technologies as possible to add Drupa because this is where you really have the eyes of your customers worldwide. But it's also true that not all the technologies which is being presented at Drupa is actually ready available for sales. Right? So right. therefore I think that uh, you may see a concept machine now and then at the next IPEX you will see the fins from it. So what are the concept machines we expect to see at Heidelberg? This is where the mouse and the cheese comes in. Ah, oh, a little cat and mouse here, I tell you. I like that. All right. Beer One and last cheese. question. One Beer last question, cheese. okay? Uh, Drupa has always been the trade show for the print industry. It was more than the print industry. It was anything that was paper, packaging, anything that had to do with the graphic interface. It was huge, it was 18 buildings, okay? It was more than 1.7 million square feet in the past. There was over two and a half million, okay? Are we seeing a change in trade shows and what is the future of Drupal or IPEX or the Graph Expos, which are prints that are in the US, Vespa, whatever they are? What do you think, from your perspective, you are manufacturers, you're the ones that are supporting these shows because they're charging you an arm and a leg to get there. So what do you think the future is? Are we going to see a continuation of a smaller and smaller trade show footprint, or is there any hope for trade shows, period? Who wants to start? Well, I think what, what, what we feel is that the relevance of such shows are is going to continue, but I think the size probably would change. You know, they may not be as big as they used to be. Uh, also, this is because of the fact that even if you look at the example like India, uh, earlier there never used to be so many local shows. Now you have very many local shows. The IPEX themselves have shifted here. So when we talk of the newer technologies and the expectation towards that, and if you look at the number of shows which are happening, obviously you can't have something new appearing in every three or six months' time. Yes, you may have certain upgrades, you may have certain more uh, integrations, etc., which may get announced. So the relevance, yes, more from the perspective of everyone getting together, but probably smaller in size. Anyone else want to comment on that? Klaus? Yeah, I think that uh, Drupa will always exist as being the major print show. But I think what is happening today is that we, if you look at the print production volume, right, it is now shifting from the industrialized world towards the developing countries. So I think that if you take the, the, the IPEX, the ICAS, etc., I think that we will see that these trade shows may scale down and they will move towards the big countries because that is where what shall I say, the graphic arts manufacturers, the customers are going to come from from the future. Pradeep, yeah.
I fully agree with what Vipit said. I think at the end of the day, for any printer to go to Drupa or to go to any other trade show, it's still not cheap. <coughs> Traveling costs for 14 days, etc. Other than most wives coming back, when you come back, the wives are the happiest because they say you've lost weight. <laughs> A lot of good beer though. <laughs> <laughs> but I think at the end of the day, if every country could have a show in its own country and give a larger audience the same kind of feeling of technology, launches, etc. I think in the long run, yes, Drupa would remain niche oriented, uh, focused on the bigger picture and then every country would probably do a show for all the local people to be able to put in the same amount of effort and give it to a wider audience. Nitish? <coughs> I think it's the best show. Let it be the trade shows in India they are going on. But the latest technology which we see, because in India, wherever we have the trade show, it is the old fashioned technology is only being shown. They are just trying to get the customer base. But the latest technologies, I feel Drupa is the best. And I don't think Drupa will anytime vanish away. Perhaps we have to Drupa in Asia now. Yeah, that might be growth. well. Yeah. Maybe the China Fair. Maybe China, China Fair is starting to do that. Okay. But China Print is also very famous right now. Yes, I. You know, we look at the world. Right. I think with the two largest populations being in China and India, maybe Asia becomes the focus, not Europe. I mean, yes, Europe was the focus for many years. Uh, then it moved to the U.S. But I think now we're seeing it move to Asia, in my opinion. That's right. So, Charlie. Plus, and all of the manufacturers, and it's such an important place, because I hear what we say about the Asian shows and such like, but there's just something about Drupa that everybody feels they've got to be there. Whether they can afford to be there or not, everybody goes, and that makes it special. So I think that the, as the economic cycle turns up, I think that Drupa will expand again. I don't think it's a one-way street that is getting smaller. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank our panelists. All right. But before we go, I have just one thought for you. All right. And we're talking about Drupa. All right. But the most important thing is education. All right. Drupa is an education vehicle. All right. Will everyone agree with that? You go there to learn. You go there to learn and see technologies that you won't have any exposure to. So in my mind, this is the most important thing for all of you, because you can't get it any other place, is education. Just like you go to school to learn to read, to write, and do arithmetic, whatever it may be, the most important thing in my mind is what you can learn from these people who are sitting up here to help your business grow and prosper in the future. So let's get a big round of applause for our panelists. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Fred, and thank you, panelists. I'll now call upon Dev Nair and Noel Dukuna to do the honors and for, for give them a token of our appreciation. Here we go. So, Stephen. Stephen Schnall. Very good, Stephen. Big hand for Stephen. What do we say here? Long live Brit. I didn't hear you. Long live Brit. One more time. Long live Brit. Now you're right. Uh, whip into Deja, please. Pradeep Shah. Pradeep. Mm -hmm. Klaus from Heidelberg. We have Charlie from FFEI.
We have Hitesh Bhai for Max. And we have Fred Poonawala from Kamat. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.